thank everybody for joining us back at Higher Density Living. I want to thank our sponsors today, QualityMazdaNM.com. If you're looking for a fantastic ride, well-built, and an educational sales process in the Colorado, Texas, and New Mexico area, we can get you a cool car through Quality Mazda NM. And uh, second to that, we'd also like to thank Tartle.co. It's the only public utility out there for securely vaulting your data and sharing that when you want back to companies telling them what you need and you get paid to do it. You can visit that at T-A-R-T-L-E.co. Jason, can we please talk about things that are more important than sponsors? Yes. Carts. Cards. Cards. Tarot cards. <laughs> yeah. We're playing poker, raw, but wait, raw tarot poker. Yeah, no. So I want to talk about uh, the third raw tarot card in our uh, <clears throat> raw tarot card series. Um, and this one is interesting because this one's the catalyst of the mind. Yeah. And for, for more context, go back to the earlier episodes on this. These were pulled from the raw material, and these were originally etched inside of the Great Pyramid on one of the main hallways, I think going down to the Queen's Chamber, stenciled off the wall. And these were the genesis of essentially, would you see the Rider tarot deck and everything else? But these are the precursors to it. This is the OG stuff designed by the raw social memory complex. Now, this is your, these are channeled tarot cards. like Correct. OG channeled tarot cards. This is as OG as it gets. Yeah. The vast majority of them are broken down into three things, mind, body, and spirit. Okay. And these cards act as visual archetypes for you to learn from. And then from that, develop the mind, the body, and then the spirit for levels of transformation to what Ra would call points of harvest or harvestability. All right. So we've already done the first two on the mind. Now we're going to number three today, catalyst of the mind. The so. Catalyst of the Mind, the Empress yeah. in traditional terror, invites us into a tapestry of cosmic exploration. I like that. Do you like that? I yeah. really like that. Um, but we're going to get into uh, the – I want us to explain, before we get into spiritual evolution and all that things, let's get into the word catalyst, the catalyst of the mind. So we're going to go back to basic raw. What is a catalyst? Yeah. What is a catalyst? There are – cause and effects for everything in this creation, this universe. Things are constantly moving, bumping into one another. And when you come into contact with something physical or with a thought or an emotion, doing that affords you something to work with. It catalyzes the next action. It's almost the impetus of energy for something new to occur. Right. For something to change, to create new momentums, new movement, okay? For the description of how Ra is using this, these catalysts. Events, if events, you want to look at. Anything like that happen all the time. Mm -hmm. But how do you recognize them? And there's negative and positive polarity. Right. They're I, not bad. They're just a they're polarity. Just, they're just a polarity. And how do you recognize them and use them to your benefit? And now, then, to, go ahead. The, the, this is in the third density. Mm -hmm. We have this. And right. where we're at now, our living hell. <laughs> this is our physical world of, you know, living, pain, and then dying. You yeah. know what I mean? Which this is, is what all, happens. Yeah. Third density. So third, there, and there's multiple densities as you get spiritually more evolved. But third density, there's catalysts, and these catalysts um, have negative and positive polarity mm -hmm. that we perceive as being negative or positive. Right. And now... In our physical bodies, there's an interesting thing that's a catalyst all the time. That is the mind. Because the mind creates momentum in thoughts. Have you ever, Jason, just like started to have thoughts that just spiral out of control? Oh, all the time. All the time. Thoughts have natural momentum and pace and weight and gravity, okay? In a metaphorical sense, everybody chill out. You're probably giving some flack for that on the internet, but you know what I mean. So when the mind when viewed as a catalyst of the mind, there's all this workable material <laughs> yeah. for you to use yeah. Yeah. all the time. Yeah, it's, it's, there's like, you can uh, be depressed when you want, just start thinking about something shitty. Right, so if you think about it, your mind is a gift, and these catalysts are more gifts. It's like, I have all this dry powder, how do I want to use it? Actually, I strike that term from the record is because I've been on venture capital calls. I have all this raw material. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have, yeah, I have all, <laughs> give it to me right here. That was Raw fun. material. That yeah. was quick. My, I'm that, you that really, I'm glowing inside. <laughs> I know. Thank you. 
you have all this raw material. And so how do you want to use it? So recognizing the cap, you have to embrace the fact that you have all this stuff, good and bad. Now, how do I want to use it to channel and focus that towards something that can reframe my mind and how it's operating and perceiving this world? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the card's really interesting here. Well, I'm getting a lot of ringing in my left ear. So card's super interesting. You have this female figure. Okay. So there's a female archetype. Yeah, absolutely. And the first thing we want to notice here is that this female archetype, she's sitting on a box, all right, square, grounded, earth, dimensional, physical thing, which she's on, and Mm -hmm. it's completely black, but has eyes in it, all right? So with this process, she's on top of this grounding physical nature of life, catalyzing the mind. She has to get above it. Mm. she is on top of the seat of her grounding, but the thinking that has to occur by using the mind as the catalyst is her goal. I love that, yes. All right? And you'll find that in the in the card, right, or the tarot itself, she, on, on camera, this looks like she's facing to the left, but she's facing to the right. And through reading raw and the material, you realize that there are two paths which you can go by. And in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. Okay? Yeah, yeah. To heaven. Yeah, thank you. Well, you're also glancing to one side. The right path or the left path. Correct. And in this, she's catalyzing towards the right-hand path, the mm-hmm. service to others path, mm, yes. okay, in the context of raw. And so with that- you have service this? to self, mm-hmm. service to others. Right. And she's and that would have been on the left-hand side, mm-hmm. right? Now, also in her right hand, she has a sphere, always representative right, of knowledge, right. wisdom, unity, held in the right hand with that path. And the one thing that's always been- Interesting to me is what's held in the left. It's a bird of sorts. Mm-hmm. Oh, correct? So like, what does this bird have? It is the mind taking flight at this moment. Is it the weightlessness, right? Is it the, is it the cardinal direction that is occurring? Like what happens here when you get the introduction of the animal in the left hand? She's facing right. She sits above this ground. Her whole idea is to catalyze the thoughts to use the mind as material for her to reach a more enlightened state to determine what her future is going to look like. Yeah. I always picture this as like a metaphor of the higher self, the bird to be able to have that bird's eye view Mm -hmm. to be able to soar over, to not be so stuck in the weeds. Yes. You know, with that egoic. Oh, I like uh, that. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And it, cause the bird's like pointing at her like, Hey, you know, be be about your higher self, be about your higher self, you know, kind of like, but it, it, for me, it's kind of like when I get stuck in the weeds and start believing that the situation is real, Yeah, it's like, oh, this person's yelling at me. They're real. This person is hurting my feelings. This person is, you know, causing me anger. It's not real. None of that. It's just a mirror or reflection of, of the catalyst that I need to work on in my life. Absolutely. And that's all that is. And so that was put into this illusion, this third density illusion. It was put into my life. That person is put into my life as like, here's a funny mirror that you need to look at to work on. That was not by just happenstance. No. That person was there for a certain reason at that time for me to learn a lesson. Correct. And it's you know what that reminds me of? So you'll also find in the card that her feet float above a crescent moon. Yes, yes, yeah. And that is down towards the ground. It is that darkness. It's that negative polarity, right? That has to be yes, there for balance. Yes. But it is below. Mm-hmm. She floats above it. Her feet actually do not touch it. Yeah, and, and and in this card, the Empress card too, it's like their veil is revealed. Like there's a veil, you know, and she can see clearly. That, like a lot of people have veils. Yeah. You know, but but in third density, the veil is still there. You know, we can't see six density. You know what I mean? No. So we're having to operate in this egoic, uh, you know, non-duality type. But you see what I'm saying? And think about how this card transitions here. The block is dark, correct? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is she wearing a skirt? Yeah. What color is it? It's a darker like Correct. And then what happens? It transitions up to something that is clear. Yes. A transparent shroud. Her body is naked. It is exposed. Mm-hmm. Okay. What you find is that the clarity and crystallization increases closer to the mind. She works it down all the way through her to her grounding. Mm, yes. And that's why at the top, she has this massive sun halo behind her and stars above her crown chakra. Because the idea here is that this thing is crystallized and open. It's clear. She can see. Yes, yes, yeah. It, it's 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 the catalyst has ex- that experience with that catalyst has opened 
the right. mind, right? To be able to um, see through the veil um, and, and, at and that process time, it, right? And honestly, I'd probably say that what she's holding is a falcon, given the nature of Egyptian history. Mm, yeah, yeah, of course. And the falcon was this idea that there's an all-seeing deity that was always up there, always watching. And having that in her hand, she can almost use that to have those eyes, like catalyzing the mind to see ahead, mm. to know what choices you'll make because you'll have two different perspectives of view. You're elevating everything of which you're doing. I love that. So it's it's kind of like having the ability to be self-aware enough to where you can look at the gift and understand the gift is like, it's a Christmas tree present. Here's the bow. Here's the wrapper. So you're beginning to see the physical side of the gift. Yeah. It's a box. Yeah. And then, oh, what's inside? Oh, okay. Well, this is this catalyst. And what's this catalyst? Oh, it's 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 wanting me to be more humble, which we talked about earlier. It's wanting me to be more loving towards my spouse, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. But it's that, it's the, because I don't think the mind can comprehend unless it becomes more of a, a, a physical attribute. Does that make sense? It has to be there. Instead of something that's metaphorical. Correct. And that's why you see in the car, there's a balance between the very grounding nature mm-hmm and the higher, more metaphysical, non-physical thing, you'll always find balance in these cards. Oh, yeah, 100%. You just have to know where to look and understand. And nothing here is to be confusing or obfuscated or hidden. It's all completely exposed. But it's for you, and even in me, when I'm sharing this with you, Jason, this is what I see. This is how I interpret the archetype myself. And that's the value of these things. And, And each person should be interpreting it. Correct. And like, you know, we're showing it here and we can also probably bring up a picture yeah, on the screen, you know, on the screen. Right. But for you to look at, take the time, think about it. Think about the context, the directions, the positions, everything about it. Everything has a purpose. And the purpose is for you to decide through your own free will what it means. Yeah. I love that. Um, in closing, when we look at, and I want us to kind of understand um, not just the mind, but the soul and the journey that is happening and the catalyst of the mind, and we'll get into the soul part later, but I want us to understand the soul journey. Like, as far as like, we have such a hard time understanding soul. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, there's this side of us, we know that's spiritual and, you know, it lasts forever, but it's like, what is, what is, I'm not asking what the soul is, but how is it? correlating with the mind like what is the symbiotic relationship there is it parasitic like what no what happens is the mind feeds this thing called the soul the soul comes from the word seal s-e-e-l-e and it translates most correctly to uh personality Hmm. okay so the the soul is the personality uh, outside of spirit which is something separate but each personality you have in your incarnation is unique Outside of being a male or a female, every time something fresh occurs so that there can be new learnings that take place. Now, the mind catalyzes certain things it takes in through our senses and then through our feelings and then through our fine spiritual perceptions, right? Like when you walk into rooms, like something makes me feel Mm, uneasy, but nothing could be going on. All of these things help develop and form this soul. And the journey of this soul is its refinement, this personality of the human being. And you can actually feel human beings with really refined personalities, not like aristocratic, but they have a truly balanced, beautiful ratio that's so welcoming and it's so warm that when you come to them, you can feel the crystallization of their thoughts, how they act, how they are naturally expressed through the living example of themselves. You feel with me on that? Yes, I got that, yeah. So it's not that it's, well, I guess in the sense the... The soul would be parasitic off of the information which the mind catalyzes towards it, telling it how to develop its personality at a conscious level. You track? Yeah, I, I like that. It, for for me, when I mean, and to close this all up, because uh, we're going to go into the fourth card, the experience of the mind. For me, when I look at conscious, unconscious, and then how do I bridge? How do I bridge that gap and be more? I don't want to say soul focused. That sounds kind of cheesy, but that's what you're saying. but but be more. I mean, because the whole idea is love. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the whole. So when I look at this catalyst of the mind, I understand them as gifts. The force behind them is love. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like the force Always. behind all of this is love. What's what's? And I'm using force like you know in a physics. It is a force. Yeah. It 
Creation wants you to understand more because it's beneficial to creation. When you die, you digest everything that's happened in your life, like food digests in the stomach, okay? So this force, this force to understand, this force of understanding other things pushes us. Mm. It, it tells the mind at an evolutionary level, evolve, learn more, search, become wise, be truthful, live with these principles that will develop your soul or personality. Because those things at the end, when things do end, because you are a material fleshy body and you will not exist forever, they will dissolve. And the truths that are left within understanding those things of the personality, what was catalyzed in the mind through the use of this material, goes into this, say like this uh, hard- Like Heiser Records or whatever, yeah. Yeah, like your hard drive in the sky, Imprinted, cosmic records, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That energy signature from mm. what has been learned through the development of the soul, this personality using catalysts of the mind, I liked it. are there forever. That makes and sense. the more you catalyze in this life, the more you recognize those gifts, the bigger the meal you get to digest and the better foundation you have for your next incarnation. Mm, that's cool. I like that. All right? That's cool. Let's go. Thanks, everybody. See ya. 